Let's start again. Let's start again. Okay. Um, my name is Wasir P. Desapareda. I'm the research data librarian at Columbia University Libraries, and you have me to deal with for the opening few minutes of this program while we're waiting for Alex to show up. Uh, my illustrious co-host, Alex Hill, uh, who is not here yet. I apologize for the lack of sound for the opening five minutes, but I, uh, you know, we're still, still easing into the new setup that we have here that where I'm working with two computers at once. And, and um, so that's how that's working. Anyway, I wanted to say that this is kind of the end of the season, or I guess the mid-season break or sweeps week or something along those lines, because next week I think is Christmas Friday, and the week after that is New Year's Friday, so we're not going to be uh, streaming on either of those two days. When we come back in January is not entirely clear, I have to figure that out with my co-host. And then additionally, I... Um, uh, also, come January, we'll be starting a second stream, which will be just me. Uh, it will probably be Tuesday afternoons at this time, and it's called Coding with the Dead. And I'll be doing, um, I'll be working on a similar project to the Rose Hall project, but much more, uh, much more involved and much more complicated. And it'll just be me, so that may not make for the most engaging uh, visual or, well, visual okay, but definitely not the most engaging audio content because I'm probably not going to be talking to myself too much. So um, the reason it's called Coding with the Dead is because one thing that is very easy to do is get royalty-free copies of Grateful Dead concerts. So that'll serve as sort of the backdrop, I suppose. Um, which might, you know, is, might be a fun gimmick, we'll see. Um, in any case, uh, that's more or less how, we, how we're situated here while I'm waiting for Alex to come back. Um, and I'm actually, well, while I'm waiting for Alex to come back. So in the meantime, I can sort of start picking up on where we left off last week. So if you... So if you recall, last week we ended up with this kind of graphic, and the um, it's all completely wrong, but it is getting close to something. Um, let me switch over to the Mac now. Okay, so we have this visualization. This is an SVG that we created. Let me inspect it so you can see what it looks like here. So. There's an SVG here that's uh, 250 by 250. Um, it's much bigger here in the, the inspector lights it up as a much larger thing because each of these groups is very large as you can see. And the reason the groups are very large is because they're actually drawing rather large shapes here, these paths. Um, there isn't much I can do about this for the time being. But what we did is we split the data of the of the people uh, down to just nine or ten, I think this is, ten, nine people, and um, started trying to create pie chart slices for them within the context of a uh, within the context of an SVG, and the the thing of it is is that. We've been talking about D3 and how this is all made with D3, etc. But actually, it isn't. We haven't used D3. We only started using D3 at the end of um, at the end of the last stream. So if I go here and go to Community Tree, um, we see that the component that we created we created a component called Community Tree, and it creates this SVG. That's the SVG that you saw on screen. And then for every single person in the data that gets sent into this component, we create a 
new component, the community tree person component that carries this data along. And there's something that I was thinking about um, that was missing from the original way that we implemented this, which is that we didn't have a um, unifying group, which is what the G tag suggests. The G tag is uh, the group tag in SVG and lets you nest things inside so you can uh, execute a command on the group as a whole and have everything play nice with it. So one thing that we typically do is um, we have uh, we can group everything into a group and then we want the group this group to be located at the center of the SVG so um, one way of describing that is since I know it's 250 by 250 I can just say uh, move everything 125 by 125 over and then let's close this and indent these and now if we look, everything's been, been budged halfway across the, the SVG, which is only 250 by 250, so it's actually only about a box about this big, and then has been budged down half of the way too. You can't really see it. Actually, let's, let's make that possible. Um, I don't remember if that's the appropriate inline style. Nope. All right. What's the border CSS syntax? No, this is just the border style. Border shorthand. There we go. Five picks solid red. So you can see that this is the box that's 250 by 250 into which the SVG fits. And uh, you may be saying, well, but this isn't exactly midway uh, across, so what's going on here? That's probably because we're doing some translation already inside this, um, this component here, the community tree person component. So now that we have the the entire visualization sent oh sorry so we have this as as 125 by 125 but we also code in a height and width in the component itself so if i go here you can see that we set a width and we set a height that's equal to that are referred to as this width and this height here in this in the uh, template so it would actually probably be better if we replace this with some math. So in order to do math inside the template, there's two ways we could do this. We could do something like this, which is uh, a half width equals um, this width divided by two. Um, and then if I did this, That works. We have the same sort of uh, same sort of behavior here, and we can actually even double check to make sure that that is is being. Um, oops. Can even double check to make sure that that's being um, calculated correctly by scrolling down here, and we see it's 125, 125. So we could do we could do it that way, but I'm not a big fan of of doing that when we can just do math. So. Last week, we added the Ember Math Helpers, which provide helpers inside the template, templating language to do math. Um, why did that? There you go. So it's probably just div. Yep, div. Div AB. So instead of this half width here, we can do div this width 
width comes first, and then two. And then here we can do div this height and then two. And now if we go back here, we see that this is still uh, still built correctly. So that's great. So we're moving this G, this single group that has all of the data inside of it into the center of the of the visualization. So that's that's precisely where we want to be. And I would say that for the time being, we're basically done with this visualization as well, except for one thing, um, which which did not come up earlier and that is we need a we need to know how much data there is in total so that we pass here and i'll show why in a second but actually um while we're here we can actually commit this so let me just do some deleting here and save and then um, git add everything, and then git commit, and then let me type in a message. So um, add g to visual visualization that centers the data components. Excellent. Password. Okay, so we're going to need the size of the data as a whole. Now we know it's 10, uh, 10 people, we can count them, or sorry, nine people, we can count them. And we know that the actual real data set has 208, I think, people in it. Uh, and the reason we need this is subtle, but you'll see it in a second. So somehow we need to pass a new variable into the child components here that's let's call it data length equals and let's just uh, let's just leave it blank for now and then let me open up the uh, the component And we'll make this equal to this args data, which is what's being passed into this component. Oh, Alex is here. Let me admit him. And then hello. Hello. What's going on with your screen? Uh, you you can't see my uh, video. Well, I mean, I can I can set that up. Hold on. Did we start? Yes, we started. I've been I've had two mistakes already regarding missing uh, missing audio. It's it's been a it's been a tragedy. Uh, but I think it's been now. How do I? Speaker view. There we go. All right. Now I see you. Now let's uh, let's bring you into the into the world. There you go. You're on the stream now. Let's uh, make you a little bit smaller. Hello, everybody. Sorry, I was late. I had a had a, a difficult day. Laurel had to go into the clinic, and and I was not expecting Mr. Pickles to uh, need to go outside so badly. But apparently he did. He that's, made that point very clear. That's that's his uh, that's his jam is uh, having to go outside very badly. Yeah, he uh, he's happy now, and he has a little treat bone in his mouth, which is chewing very loudly next to me. Mm -hmm. He's in happy land. Give me your best life, huh, buddy? Mm -hmm. I only still see your face as a picture. That's because I guess in the past we've been doing it where I hosted. 
and I stream it. Ah, oh, there we are. No, I. It's it's a lot of a lot of little fiddly steps that have to happen in between everything just to get everything up and running appropriately. But now it is so so we have that going for us. Very cool. Let me start my OBS virtual camera. There we are. All right. So where were we? What did I miss? What was the too long during read version? Can so you... the yeah. Sorry, I'm. I'm adjusting my levels because I'm much quieter than you are, which was not noticeable before you came on, but is noticeable now that you are on. You know, I've been hearing this all my life. Um, it's commentary on uh, on my culture and my people. Yes, I'm. I'm definitely doing a racism here. Let there be no doubt. <laughs> um good times okay um i should be about as loud as you now because i i'm almost peaking um and you are about peaking so i think i think that that's that's about right so and this is for the stream right because the volume on the zoom did not change a single bit oh yeah this is this is only for the stream only for the stream got yeah. it um, yeah if i'm if i'm quiet on your zoom you have mm -hmm. to solve that using your own technology right this is... So many channels, so many frequencies. Woo. Yeah, um, this will get a little bit easier. So the, as I was explaining to the audience, um, the, the switch of both moving to OBS and switching computers at the same time left a lot of uh, things unhandled, um, mm -hmm. mostly in the realm of audio because the video stuff is very easy to fix because you can immediately see if it doesn't work or not. But because we, I'm, I don't, I'm not actually listening to myself on the stream because that would be way too disorienting because of the lag. I can't actually hear that I'm that uh, if I'm audible or not. But on the flip side, the more we do this, the more the settings, uh, you know, like these edge cases where. I mean, to put it simply, I started the stream with um, I started the stream with this view where it was just me talking to the camera, and I hadn't yet added the new microphone or the fact that I'm using this microphone and not this microphone. I hadn't added that change to the to the software. There you go. Oh well, we're everything is working fine right now, beautifully. Yeah, yeah, everything should be fine now. And uh, okay, so we're we're on the screen. And uh, what I had started doing was you can see that there's um, you can see that there is a two new lines of code here. Mm -hmm. um, I created a group that sits that centers all of the data. Got it. Um, uh, so now we got to make it radiate. Right, right. So it does this with a with the translate that we used last week, and um, it takes this width, which is set up, he which is set down here, two fifty, mm -hmm. and it divides it by two, and it does the same thing for height. So, so it's all programmatic and just as it should be. Now, um, my suspicion is this isn't going to work, but. Let's see. Yeah, let's delete to here. So, and then what I was saying was, uh, I know ahead of time because I think about these things that we are going to need um, to pass the length of the data set as a whole to the component for every every uh, every single person. And I haven't explained why yet, but uh, that will be clear in a second. So now, so the size can be relative. This is not that complicated. Also, you're making it a logarithm so that the differences are more marked. No, 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 no. You are looking at something different there. Log is is just to make sure that oh, I did this again. Log means just send something to the console. So okay. Oh, so, this is log, not logarithm. Yay! Yeah, like so, logging. Yes. Yeah, not so, like. 
yeah. a math algorithm. <laughs> so it logs nine to the console. So that is exactly the expected behavior. So we can have, uh, we can send this variable data length to the child component and it is equal to this. Let's make this a little bit prettier. Okay. And now, all right, so now there is, um, uh, the length is coming in and now we have this community tree person component, right? Which is what, what we stopped working with yesterday or last week. Okay, so now uh, let's go to that. All right, so we have, um, We have this group that's created here, and this explains why uh, you can't tell here, but earlier I put a border around this, and you could see that these pi wedges aren't actually centered, and it's because of this um, translate 25 over here, because that, that pushes them extra a little bit, uh, 25 over. And then it pushes it down a little bit too, a multiple of how, of how far down the row it is. So as a result, each, each of these wedges gets pushed down a little bit more as, as we go down. Now, um, this we can actually get rid of now because we, well, let's, yeah, let's get rid of it. And now these will all fill in on top of each other like that. And then we have to change this arc. So, for this, we go back to the uh, component that we had started. All right, is this all familiar? Yep. Okay. So um, if we do, if we change this, we can make smaller wedges. So this will be a 45 degree angle. Ta-da. And so on. So what we want to do is uh, earlier, the transform was going up and down based on how much data there was, right? Whereas now we want the first wedge to go in at 12 o'clock and then the next wedge to go in at whatever 12, 9 over 12 is. It has to move that much. It has to move one ninth of a circle over because there are nine total wedges. So how do we do that? That's like more or less a rhetorical question. Isn't it better just to count the total of wedges there's going to be anyways and just use that as a variable? That's, like, what, that's what we did. You just said nine. You gave it an absolute value. Well, I said I know it's going to be nine. Ah, okay. That's, it's just that you happen to know it's going to be nine. Okay. Right, right, right. That's, and that's, that's what we did. That's what um, the... Uh, that's what this is. Right. This sets a variable called data length that is equal right. to the length of the data. I just and saw that you gave it a hard value. I, I like I was. Oh, like, I haven't given it a hard value or anything. I just said divided by four here, just just for laughs. I got it. Um, so I was going to change the four to data length. And well, that'll divide it by nine, but that won't that won't make it. So. Oh no, that's true. That's true. Hold on, let me do the, the let me do the math okay. in my head. Uh, yeah, not, because you also want it to be bigger than you. You want it to be slightly bigger than the exact value so that it has volume. No, I think you're thinking about this uh, a little bit funny. This has to do with how you do how you calculate radians. So currently the start angle is zero and the end angle is is uh, math pi divided by four. And right. what that gets us is zero is 12 o'clock, and then math pi divided by four, pi over four, is, is what we translate into degrees as 45 degrees, right? Pi over two is 90 degrees. So as a result, if you want something, so two pi is all the way around the circle. Right. So if you want one ninth of all the way around the circle, it's not, 
pi over nine, but it's pi over it's two pi over nine. Yeah. So my funny way of yeah, I guess my in my yes, because it it because it becomes the full circle. The full circle is the thing you want to divide into nines. So in order to do that, because the pi is only accounting for like half of the damn circle. Not like you want, exactly half. Oh, you yeah. want to have the, the both both demi circles in there. Right. So now this is, it doesn't look like much, but if you think about it, one uh, 45 degrees is what a pizza slice is. So that's eight. So does this look a little bit smaller? Oh, your than... pizza's into eight? I call my pizza's into six. Well, I, I mean, I yeah, that is, no, but New York pizzas, they cut into, I mean, I usually cut them into six just because I'm greedy, but... Uh, you get a bigger slice in your hand and like it folds and it feels more like, you know, like, like real. Yeah, you know? but I'm pretty sure New York slices are, are eighths. But I, one way or another, this is clearly less than 45 degrees, but not by a lot. Are we in agreement on that? Yeah. All right, excellent. Okay, so we're making the wedge the appropriate width, right? But as you can see here, there is no rotation here per se. There's just a start angle and an end angle. And for this, let's ask them what they're doing here. So you see how they do it here is um, uh, they're multiplying, they're not doing a rotation. They're doing a, uh, hold on, let me, let, me, let me think about how to say this. Is there even a transform for rotating? When is the start place is the ending places of the last one. You just had a pixel in there in between. No, I'm I'm sort of thinking out loud here. Let's actually do it the way they do it here. Okay, so um, instead of zero and two math pi divided by this arg's data length, um, instead we are using these as, okay, let's do this this way. The first wedge has a start angle of what? And uh, we can start at the top, so 90. Just zero. Zero, yeah. yeah. If we're using quadrants, is that the unit of measure no, here? No, just, just with SVG, it starts at 12 o'clock is zero. At 12 o'clock is zero, got it. Right, and what's the closing? the width the closing angle whatever the width of, of it is whatever the arc it whatever the arc it drew that's 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 where it's it is two pi over nine right? right so that's let's not call that one let's call that zero because it's the index is zero right for number one what's the starting angle two pi over nine mm -hmm. or two pi over and what's the closing angle Two pi over. Oh, hold on a second. Ba, 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 ba. Interesting. Uh, it is also two pi over nine away from it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know how to write that. If it because the, the way you're thinking about it, the way you're doing this list is like. Uh, it's two okay, times yeah. two pi over nine. That makes sense. Sorry. So what's, yeah, of course what's, that makes sense. what's the next one? Yeah, it's the same logic. So now it's going to be two two times two pi over nine. Uh, and then it's going to be three times three. And then so forth and so on. Three, four, four, five. Okay, it's, now let's... Until you reach two nine nine. Two nine zero. All right, so the last one, the eighth, nine, eighth, nine eighth zero. one. Nine times... Nine, 9 times 2 pi. Well, it'll uh, be 8 times 2 pi, because these are 0, 1, 2. It's the index numbers, not the actual count. Right. So it'll That's be, a good point, because we started at 0. Yeah. And then the end will be 0. 0. Yeah, that's it. But, that's, but 0 is also equal to 9 times 2, two pi, pi over, over nine, 9 times 0. Yes. No, no, no. It's it's equal to the same thing. So right. if we abstract this out, 
So this is 2 times 2 pi, but this is actually 1 times 2 pi. Right. And this is uh, 0 times... 2 pi over 9, correct. 2 pi over 9. And then this is 1 times 2 pi over 9, etc. Right. right? So we can, if we say that um, i equals 0, i equals 1, i equals 2, i equals 8. Then we can further abstract this as i, 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 i. And, uh, and then I this plus can one be i plus, plus one. one. Always. Yep. And you thought your life was just going to consist of reading some archive materials and, uh, and reading a poem. And look at you now doing algebra. Mm -mm -mm. Well, then, what have we done with our lives? Then furthermore, the 9 is actually this args data length. Yeah, that was... So, the start angle is equal to this args i times 2 times nath dot pi divided by this args data length. Right? Hold on, hold on. Right, because pi to correct. Okay. And then you're gonna go back and create the an, an iterator over there. No, no, no. It's, we, are, iterator, we already iterator. have it. We already Forgot have it. it. And then the this is going to be equal to this args i plus one times two times math dot pi blah 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 blah. All right. Where's the iterator that you said you said we had one already? Yep. I'll show you in a sec. Woo! Math! It does what it's supposed to. <laughs> Give you a headache? What's that? Besides giving you a headache, it does make pretty circles on D3. Yeah. Well, no, we're, oh, I guess we are using D3 here. So um, just for laughs, let's do, um, wait, that's always going to be zero. Whoop. That actually looks pretty cool. I see it. I can see it. Rad, we're getting places. Uh, you actually, the, you gave it the length of, of the of the of the life. Uh, be the size of the of where the cutoff is. Of the... No, I just 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 it's just arbitrary. Oh, just... this one is just literally growing. It's it's actually yeah. a fractal that's just growing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That just looks cool. I think. Yeah, but it could be in theory. The length of the... Well, what it will be will be the birth year. The birth year, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I wonder what, what this looks like. Huh. Did I... No, I saved it. Can you refresh my memory with this existing iterator that I ne that that I just? Oh yeah, have? I'll show it to you. There, that's what I was trying to do. Because this, at least as far as I'm concerned, this is the magical eye that where JavaScript was like, ah, oh, he probably means a well, an do iterator. You, do you remember what this args refers to? No, that's I think where I need the refresher. Okay. Um, the model, right? Close. So if we go to the parent component, right? Right. When we 
instantiate oh, there it is. this so component. Person each person becomes I. Got it. No, 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 no. So, so the each operator yields two variables: a person, which is the data about the person, and an I, which is its index in the array. Ah, right? Okay, so I is not the per a person is the name, and I it gives you well, the well. It's the person plus. It's all the stuff, right? Oh, like a, like a small little object with like everything that. Yeah, yeah, all the data. Got it. And so then into the child component, this community tree person, we're sending three variables, one called person, that's all the data, mm -hmm. one called I, which is the index, and one called data length, which is the length of the data set as a whole, right? right and then yeah, now I remember what the I, which always been passing an index, so I is always available. Okay. Correct, correct. And the way you access those three variables is through this args here. In the template, you can, uh, like you can see here, concat at person dot id plus dash g. Right. Why is it, because, did it be, is this arc seems very, very high level, very abstract. Why is that the only this in there? Where? Here? No, in the other one. Why Why would this args work in, in, in there? What do you? Ah, it's because this is actually just exporting it within that function. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so this is this is the class definition of that child component. Community. Oh, I'm pointing, but you can't see my monitor. Um, community tree person has right. has a property age, and it has a, a another property that's a getter that's a function arc, mm -hmm. and what arc does is it returns a D3 arc, right? that has these these values, right? And eventually we can also add color and we can add other sorts of things, etc. But for now, this is all we've got, which is pretty rad, right? And and this can access, uh, so this can, because this is the, this is a child component, so it can access the parent, all the stuff in the parent. No. No, it, the stuff in the parent has to be explicitly sent to the child. Ah, I got it. So that's what, um, oops. That's what these three things do. Like, like right. it, it. Okay, got it. So that's what, it, what that's doing is not accessing it. It's actually sending it to the, to the, to the child. Got these it. three lines. Yes, yes. It sends it, it's, it's so. Ember, I don't know if this is still the uh, the big way to do things, but they had this thing about data down, actions up. Uh, wait, what? Oh, this is this is reversing it. <laughs> so, data down, actions up. I think that this is this is an older way of talking about this, but the idea is that, um, and I know this is kind of small on the on the uh, stream. Reads better now. But uh, uh, you like this DDAU. So like they say here, a common pattern. Oh, we might as well. We can look at this for a second. Um, a common pattern found in Ember applications, which emphasizes unidirectional data flow. So that means that you you load the data at the topmost part of the tree that you can, and then you send it down to the child components as necessary. So. We could very easily look up inside this component here. We could just look, you know, send a new request to look up a new person every single time. But that goes against this. It's better to load all the data and then send it, send it down. Because then that also makes it clear who owns the data, like they say here. Um, right. Also, the syntax is a little funny because it's camel case on the parent, and but the name of the file is, uh, is all lowercase. Uh... Oh, that's that's JavaScript. Uh, that's that's JavaScript uh, custom. Is file names are always written in kebab case, but classes right, are but written. Right, but here you camel have case. community tree as camel case person. Can you go back to the to the community tree JS on the top? Go scroll all the way to the top. Let me see. This is the highest ah, got it. So all you have to do is just write community tree person component. Well, I mean, actually, this class can be called whatever, but yeah. 
but how do I still don't have a hard time understanding how this child notes is a child of the other one. It so What's so okay. I'll I'll explain. I'll explain it. So they are literally children in the sense that there's community tree JS ah. and community tree HBS that uh -huh. are parents and then there's a folder in here called community tree and inside that is the person component so this Got is that like sorry that was the missing component in my head i was like how the hell is this file know it's the child of the other one since not a single word in common uh between the two files so uh, and the and that relationship so this is the template for the uh the tree as a whole the relationship is indicated with the two dots here, like in Ruby. Right. Um, and uh, but nothing is stopping me from doing like some random component and then sending person equals. Well, this isn't going to work, but person, right? It'll work. Oops, it'll work if I put it down here, Oops, not here, but here like nothing is stopping me from having some random component that isn't inside an, a, a child folder. The parent child relationship is established because the template for community tree, which is this file here, open uh, calls the community tree person component below it. Mm -hmm. So as a result, this component sits inside of the other component. Got it. You sure? Makes a little bit more sense now. Okay. Um, so it's just you know it it's leveraging the the sort of semantics of HTML to be able to put components in in nested relationships, you know, which is why that kind of nesting is important. Anyway, so um, the actions up part we're not really dealing with, but this was like if you make a change to something, that change should bubble up as opposed to be saved on the component. But this is this uh, this I guess is um, like an abstract pattern that isn't really um, they don't talk about it much anymore, but it is still I guess a pretty good pattern to to know. And we won't be dealing with it a lot just because we're not changing the data. Okay, um, so what's next? So let's um, let's uh, let's commit where we are. I mean, next step is to add a little pixel in between all these uh, wedges. Uh, yeah, we can do that. For that, um, we look at ah. It, uh, uh, the browser search function on GitHub is not necessarily the best way because some browsers won't allow you to search stuff that still hasn't been scrolled up or down. Uh, okay, but it, it on the GitHub because GitHub uses frames, but I guess it worked. But yeah, it worked here. Yeah. Um, so we want end angle, pad angle. Pad angle, nice. Those nice D three people think of everything. Okay. So one degree is math pi divided by one eighty. Oh, no, 180, right. Oops. There we 
we go. There it is. Yay. So I think that this this actually may not this this may be too little, so we actually may need to do um, 270. 90. No, because when we get to 200 wedges, that's that's a lot of screen real estate that's taken up by the uh, by the white space. Right. But we can we can leave it like this. So we can add um, Oh, it's almost break time. Okay, so now let's um, color. No, not color. Not yet. Yay, color! You want color? People want color. People. Want I think color. people people want the scale next. Okay, fine. If that's what people want. Um, All right, let's do scale. Scale makes sense. You know, but color is the one where, like, committee meetings can run over, like, you know, two hours, people trying to pick the right color. You going to be okay there? Man. Things are rough up here on the 19th floor. I can tell. <laughs> that lunch. Was the lunch recent? <laughs> No, you, I yeah. sent you a picture of lunch, you know. It, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. It looked a, like a hot pocket. It did. It did. Um, it was it was a egg burrito. Nice. With cheddar cheese. I think I, I think I need to start buying cheddar cheese um, because I don't really like cheddar cheese. Like, it's fine, but I'm not going to, like, snack on cheddar cheese. You know, I'm not gonna like sit down and put away a half pound of cheddar cheese. In one I have second. done that in the past. It is I, doable. I have done it too, but it's not something that I'm liable to do. Mozzarella, on the other hand, I I can put away a pound of it in one sitting, and I don't think that's healthy. I, I have a I have a healthy. I have a bag here that is left over from the lasagna extravaganza of last week. If you want me to send it up your way. Uh no, I mean you need to eat it too. Um. I do like it. Yeah, yeah. So, so shredded cheese I also don't really snack on, although I used to as a kid. Um, but it's like when I buy like the block, I just like just cut off a huge piece and I'm like chomp, 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 and then I cut off another huge piece and I'm like chomp, 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 chomp. That's that's not good. Good time. Uh, you want to take a break now so that you can get your coffee in order? I don't have coffee. I just have water. But yeah, let's take a break um, because the scale the scale thing will probably be kind of tricky. So. Might as well. Sounds good. I'll see you, let's say, at four? Uh, let's say three after. Three after, got it.
Alex, we are live. We are live. I am just accommodating myself. Yeah. Are you are you good and comfortable? Yes, I can't find a spot today for some reason. Yeah. Same. There there I I had a meeting this morning where I started zoning out because my, my foot hurt so much. But everything's okay now. That's that's just how life goes. Mm -hmm. Um. What? Uh, all right. So I hope you had a good break. Yeah. And now with uh, with me half asleep, let's let's see if we can get D three scaling to work. Does that sound good? Yep. Now, what do you know about D three scaling? I have done it. I know it's possible. Do you remember what it's for? It's to change the sh that where the numbers, some kind of numbers calculated, change the uh, scale of the thing you're doing. Yeah. So if you look here, we have um, uh, the outer radius is set to a hundred, right? Yeah. But the only so a number like two seventy that we can't. I mean, we can obviously change it, but it's not. It's not a variable set up to the visualization. That two, the 270 here, this 2, this 1, this 2, these numbers are all uh, dealing with properties of the data itself or of circles. So we can't really change them. Like they, they're not something that depends on the size of the visualization, right? But if we wanted to make a wedge, like let's say uh, one of the um, uh, people is 14 years old if we wanted to make their wedge 14 long well what does that 14 mean is it it it's if it's 14 pixels then it's going to be teeny tiny and you know and no one's going to be able to see it if it's you know so so how do we sort of do that calculation how do we figure out how to turn 14 or whatever the age is into a pixel length that takes up the entirety of the space of the visualization, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where D3 scale comes in. So, yeah. And I think that's where the D and D3 is all about, right? No? What's that? Is that what, if I remember correctly, what the D in D3 is all about? There's three Ds, that's why it's D3. And one of them is? What is it? Data dimensions? Data design dimension? Data, data driven documents. Ah, yeah. completely anticlimactic, if you ask me. Um, well, you're a little bit right in the sense that uh, scale involves a domain. Well, no, I, I was thinking more in terms of calculus, but sure. OK. I was thinking in terms of how we name functions in calculus right. and derivatives, uh, how we do derivative functions. Uh, but I guess derivatives have nothing to do with, um, with D3, which is quite a disappointment because in my head, it, 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 it had everything to do with D3 until like this moment. And well, I mean, you, you keep telling yourself that that's what that's all about and uh, maybe it'll be true. So, um, the scale you define once, and then every little widget inside, or every other subsequent widget, you use the scale to do the uh, to do the computation, right? right? So as a result, we need to work. We need to go. So this is the community tree person component, and we need to go back up to the community tree component because we only need to do this once for the community tree as a whole. We don't have to redefine the scale every single time for the community tree person, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, we can call this uh, age scale, and it's equal to um, some function. Mm,
I don't know if this works. Okay. So here we have import arc from D3 shape, and here we need to import scale linear from D3 scale. Okay. So the way this works is you define the scale. Oh wait, I don't need to do this this way. Age scale, it does, it, it, it's, funny feeling this isn't right, but we'll see. Nope, that's I thought. Those have to go inside parentheses. So it requires a domain and a range. Do you remember what the differences are between domains and ranges? The, um, the domain is like the measuring unit and the range is like the limit, the beginning and the end. Domain is for the data and the range is the return. I just came up with that mnemonic device. Yeah, the domain describes the data, and the range describes what's returned. I kind of like the way that I had it in my head. All right. Well, the measuring bad. unit is like the data. All right. So, what's the domain of this data? Um, what's what's the smallest value? It's. To, 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 to oh, sorry. Google. These aren't age scales. These are year scales. Yes. So what's the smallest value? One year? I don't know. What did we put in the formula to generate the fake... Uh, whatever we put in the formula to 18, generate... 1817. 1817? Yep. What's the max value? 1835. I don't think that's right. Or 34, or 36, 32. What's the range? Uh, zero to one? Oh, yeah. Because the... Like, it's not going to be one. It's not going to think of it in terms of, like, percentages. No. So the domain is the data. And we know that the uh, the birth year and the, and the exit year are... The lowest it can be is 1817. I mean, we actually know that it's lower still but we're going to say that the lowest it can be is 1817 and the highest it can be is 1832. I mean that and that's a hard limit, right? So domain data. So that's that describes the lower and upper bounds of the data. Range is the return. So we want when we feed 1817 into the scale, we, we want, want to get back 0. And when we feed 1832 in, which is the max value, we want the max value size of the pie chart, which is this height divided by two, because the pie chart the is in the middle. So divided by two so that it can get the radius. Yeah. What's that? That would be just the diameter. So, but we want the we want the radius. So we divide it by two. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. 
because we aren't we aren't uh, and this is actually like a very uh, this is a very subtle thing. This actually isn't a circle. These are separate paths that are being that are being generated that only end up looking like a circle because of math. Um, so we d we never actually really set a radius of a circle here. It's no, just no. But if you remember your geometry correctly, um, basically all of geometry is just different ways of figuring out how to measure area, and yeah. this is one of them. Correct. It's not just one way to measure area. There's several. It's like there are several ways to describe the number two and the number three. Right. So now we have uh, so we have the year scale, and now um, we have to send that to the person. Right. And then in here, um, let's do. Another logarithm that's going to show up on the terminal. Yay. <laughs> I can't believe in the beginning uh, of the call today. I, <laughs> I forgot the log. It's just JavaScript for like put it in the terminal. <laughs> Also well, this is a number thing. We're going to end up doing logarithms anyways, if I remember correctly, because mm. the differences are not that big, right? No, not for this. Not for this? No. Oh, we won't need to? Okay, got it. No, uh, representing age um, logarithmically would, would be weird. I mean, we can do it, of course. Like, we can do it for laughs, but it strikes me as it, it might look really, really odd. No, I, I mean, it's just... I mean, for me, logarithms are something you use as like a hack that you use whenever, you know, your differences are so, everything is so close to each other that you want to, when you're doing a graph that you want to kind of like exaggerate a little bit, so you do a log. But in the, I guess in this one, we will need, yeah, actually I have no, in my, I know I have no mental image of how it would look like if we did it. Okay. Um, yeah, no clue. Yeah, I think this is this is the problem we were having um, last time with the translate, where we kind of got funky with the solution. So here I do this fn year scale blah blah blah. But instead, we can just do um, get year scale year uh, no, let's do this this way. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we do this, or actually we don't even need to do this because this is hidden. So this is year scale year and then we return this args year scale here. And then here, I mean, what you're doing to me sounds very redundant to me, but. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's. It's it's always going to be a little bit redundant because it's because of the way that it's it's passing the data. Okay, so so that didn't work. 
Um, however, So it's crashing. Oh. All right. Now it I looks. Not it, but I like it. Uh, Do you know why it looks like like nonsense? No. But it exceeded the limit. Actually. I'm even trying to figure out what the heck. No, I have no idea. All right. I don't know if my syntax is right. Yeah, it doesn't look good. Nope. Mm -hmm. Aren't you missing a parenthesis there? No. Yeah. Let's not do this this cute. Um, oh, duh. Yo. Cannot read, but this is at line thirty-six. The problem is, is that there's okay. So let's let's just do this not in this cute way. Um, I would have been more helpful if I knew where you were trying to go with that one. I, it, it's fine. So, if the person's birth year 
is less than 1817. Uh -huh. All right, let's let's do this this way. Let's set the default to be 1817. And if it's greater than 1817, then we'll set year to this arts person birth year. Right? Mm -hmm. And then, either way, we return Now what is it going to complain about? You know what I bet the problem is? I have no idea what the problem is. Are you sure? It's the problem is the date the data is not passing from here to there is that where it's, what's going on yeah i think it's not getting here in time whoa because birth year exists right right Well, uh, why don't you pass it to the log, uh, just in case, pass every, every little bit to the log. All right. To see where. Birth year, 1762. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. Now past the birth year itself. I mean, I know we just saw it. So, I th like, my guess is that this is um, that it's a it's a problem of waiting. That the computer's getting impatient and the data's not arriving on time. Yeah. Cause like, how long does it take for this thing to compute? Cause like, look. Unless I'm like typing something terribly wrong. No, this can't be right because look at what it's saying here. Cannot read property args of undefined. So this is undefined. Uh, comment out the if statement and New error. Ta da. There it is. Mm, doesn't look right. You no, know, it's kind of tapering off towards the uh, center of the circle. Well, none of the, so is it the case that everybody was born before 1817, which is very possible. So let me, um, let me go back. Oh, so it is logging. So let's just log the birth year. Mm. Ah, see, sometimes it does close it up. So it just, it just depends because the data is random. You know, like if we look here, so yeah. everybody was born before we load it again. There we go. We have one person who was born afterwards, etc. So, okay, so it works. So that's that. And then 
we should actually call this scaled arrival year. And then call this scaled arrival year. And then this is equal to this args year scale this args can you fill this in for me person birth year exit year exit year sorry. nice mm. that's it Yep, not very transparent in terms of communicating anything yet. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, but very pretty. Yep. Yep. We have 30 minutes of color. Yay, color. Oh, uh, no, no, color, no color. color. <sighs> oh, my goodness. Sorry, everybody. This is the final episode of the of 2020. So yes, he will come back in January. Oh, fresh, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. That's right. What are you getting for Christmas? Uh, a new hat because apparently this is a summer hat and it's not uh, season appropriate. Mm -hmm. So in January, I'll be wearing a nice winter hat. That's it? Or Just a fish. winter hat? Yeah, I am getting a hat there. I already got it. Although, I did get a haircut, so maybe I can probably just... Um, it looks kind of like the 20s, 1920s haircut. Yeah, um, it anyway, does. My wife gave me the haircut, Laurel. My dear Laurel. You could have just shaved your head. No. Uh, not gonna happen. But, um... So uh, that's one gift. I think I'm getting, uh, I think a bunch of people chipped in for an iPad. What is a bunch of- I started of... reading again. Why are you reading? I kind of rediscovered reading and I like it. Reading is, uh, is, is bad news. But you um, were, you were, my mind. you were reading the, uh, the, uh, for the slavery archive thing, right? Right, that was my commitment to to read more. But then it started branching out. Now I'm starting to uh, now now every time people ask me to review a book, I say yes. Like uh, that, I I don't even recognize myself. So uh, so I'm reading again. I even got a list of things that I want to read that are not for anything. Uh, and that's what the iPad comes into play. Mm -hmm. uh, because with the iPad, I can take, I can access uh, a lot of our ebook collections at Columbia University Libraries, yep. uh, and read them in uh, in bed at night when it's dark without bothering people. Because that's uh, that's an issue. Uh, now, nobody talks about this in reception history, but uh, but uh, you know, uh, are you bothering somebody else by reading? You know, that changes reading habits. Are you are you, are you sure that never comes up? Huh? Are you sure that never comes up? Maybe it does. I don't know. That's true. I am. I'm not that. I am not that uh, deep into the history stuff here. But anyways, uh, and what about you? What are you getting? Uh, I don't know. Well, I'm not getting anything from anyone else. But I'm just. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm spending my way through the winter doldrums. Nice. It's okay. I um, I bought some flashing lights that will. Man, this is so dumb. Um, I was planning on just installing everything and shooting a video and sending it to you, and then just not ever speaking of it again. But as you know, I. Now that I have this new computer that has made um, this whole streaming process nicer, and um, uh, it's a PC, and since it's like a gaming style PC, it has little disco lights inside, right? I love them. I've seen pictures and videos. And 
So the disco lights are uh, are uh, then reflected in like my peripherals, like the mouse lights up. He, it's not lighting up here. Well, I can make it start lighting up. There we go. So the you know the mouse is like always like doing little things. Then I have this little game pad that well I can't pick that up right now, but it also lights up and does all kinds of cute tricks. And um, the the thing is, is that whole like lighting environment thing. You can also get bulbs that you screw into your lamps that connect with Bluetooth to a little hub thingy that connects via Ethernet to your computer so you can sync the whole place. I disapprove of this wholeheartedly. Like my heart is in it completely. Uh, there's not a single bit of my heart left over to approve of this. Just a tiny little bit. Uh, well, no, do not turn your apartment into a disco. Look, <laughs> I'm not the first one to. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to be the one to stop you from this madness. But listen to yourself. You're about to turn your apartment into a synchronized disco tech. I'm going to say this. In high school, I had uh, like controllable Christmas lights in my room um, year round. And I really liked the sort of calm of having just the Christmas lights provide all the all the lighting. So I th so that's part of it. The other is like just because it's kind of cool and because like, you know, what else am I going to do? I better come up with a good idea for a gift for you so that uh, so these are not the only choices we have available to uh... No, I, you know, I, you know, like, yeah, I don't no, know. The thing is, look, at the end of the day, I, I know what you're saying. Like when I, when I was younger and by myself, um, many times in my life, I would do crazy stuff with my apartment. Um, and now I, I guess there's a little bit of me that is like, I don't have that freedom anymore. Like I have to have a nice Christmas tree with the nice couch that matches the nice table and this kind of stuff. But, um, uh, yeah, that's, that's what the you know that's what they're required by by the the statutes of bougie life. Uh, the like you cannot you know deviate from you know section A, three of the code you know uh, mm -hmm. of the bougie code. Uh, so I so maybe I'm just envious that you can get to synchronize <laughs> that you get to turn your apartment into Studio Fifty Eight, Studio Five Sixty. I mean, you know, like. It is ridiculous. Uh, send send us a video. I will. I'm a big I will. fan of the. I'm a big fan of your cam, of your live cam that t that that is shooting the Hudson all the time. Uh -huh. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, now we're gonna need to point it inside too. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think um, yeah, it's four thirty-seven. I think we should not tax the patience of our audience anymore. Uh, I think it's a great to end up in this little Christmas uh, uh, note uh, of cheer and um, wish everybody happy holidays. And but I, I did. To, don't let me forget that I still need to download last week's videos. Uh, in fact, I should oh, they're gone it. already. Oh, no, I, you have two weeks. We have two weeks. Right, right. I have two weeks. No, I have to download them right now so that we don't uh, so that we don't lose those. And, uh, and and I'll download, go ahead and download today's. Because the thing is that those ones we can't just pipe to YouTube directly because of the way that... Because uh, we uh, had to restart the stream, right? Yeah, Twitch caught it into two videos last No, that week. was me. Oh, okay. Because we so were having I the... I splice them using iMovie or, or, or the Adobe Premiere or something like that. We were having the audio problems. I just want to point out that I, I figured out how to make my screen not yellow on the stream. Nice. So... I mean, it had a nice little sepia thing going on. I kind of like old timey, uh, but yeah, probably more professional. 
more profesh if uh, without the yellow. Well, I mean, this uh, this is this is like like with this because our faces aren't yellow. Mm -hmm. So as a result, the yellowness of the screen really jumps out. Yeah. And it what looks it? It, lo it looks like what my monitor is in the bath. No, 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 no. It's just the usual night shift um, on the Mac. It's a setting. Mm. Here, I can show you how to get there. So if you go to um, System Preferences, and this mm -hmm. is kind of small, but I can't zoom in. Um, if you go to Displays, it's mm -hmm. you have Night Shift here, so I can do Turn On Until Sunrise. So there we go. Now it's white. Mm -hmm. The yellow is gone. You yeah. saw how it was like general, general, general. And then back I wonder on. if I, my screen doesn't turn yellow by itself at night. I wonder if I have that or not. You maybe don't have it set because I think it's off by default. Oh, I think I might have it better on your eyes, right? That's the whole point, oh, right? Oh, this is way better on your eyes, yeah. Oh my, oh my lord. Let me turn that on right now. Hold on a second. You said it was on what? On uh, display? Displays. On displays. And uh, night shift, and it's off. And I'm gonna say sunset to sunrise. Oh wow! What? It already feels softer. Mm-hmm. And Thank like, you, Monsieur. that is very nice. Especially if it's the only lighting you have in your apartment at night. It's uh, it's really com it's so easy on the eyes. Uh, speaking, of course, that now the the luminescence on my face that is coming from the screen that actually makes my face kind of visible on the zoom, uh, it's it's gone. But I got I have some news though. Uh, my uh, apparently our employer is also uh, you know, putting some trees uh, underneath the Christmas tree. I have uh, a ring light. A mic, a pad for writing and doodling, mm -hmm. uh, all the stuff we wanted for to improve the the sort of pedagogical experience. It's all uh, arrived finally. Uh, I got the email a couple of days. Ago. Nice. Um, I gotta go get it on Monday before uh, before we uh, we break for the holidays. But th that means that next year when we come back, I'm gonna have like a nice white light, and I will be able to doodle stuff, or at least I will, because I'll, I'll have the the pad the digital pad well the white light can be uh the the problem is is that well what you want is you want that light to drown out your blue light so like um and i don't know why why this light on me why all of a sudden it looks like my apartment's full of smoke yeah but it's like i i don't i don't understand here i can make it brighter maybe that will help nope, nope looks smokier even exactly. brighter yeah anyway i don't know but i think that this lighting is fine so i'll figure it out once i get the light i could your mom because i i have other other light sources around here that i can play with to make sure that everything is uh in the right place well i'm gonna have a disc the disco light got not the lamps but a replacement lamp for my desk got delivered today so uh project disco is is starting up I mean, I, I shouldn't talk too much. I just named the project that I launched two weeks ago, Carry Disco, uh, where Disco stands for Digital Scholarship. Get it? Yeah. Disco. Anyways. Uh, it was Cardi, Cardi, Cardi Disco. Well, Cardi, Cardi Disco is, is a, you know, Cardi's already uh, in fashion, so Carry Disco is like, I'm just riding the wave, man. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. <laughs> Happy holidays, dear audience. We'll see you uh, next year. Uh, so far this year, we've gotten to almost every uh, component of the thing. Now, there's a lot of polishing work that needs to happen before we finish it off with a nice conversation with Celia and uh, bringing in the real data. Yeah, uh, that's that's actually a great point. Um, we've, we've, well... No, because we still have to handle the the interactivity between the different different uh, widgets and stuff. Uh -huh. Well, and an about page and a credit page and this kind of like pros that goes along with the thing. But like mm -hmm. most of the important components are there. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. So we'll finish that in the spring. Uh, uh, 
And uh, in the meantime, though, I hope everybody gets some rest, uh, well-deserved rest. Uh, it's been a it's been a tough year. Yes, sounds so, great. Take en care. Enjoy your time off, and yeah, bye bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>